In this quick tutorial, I'll show you how you can use Excel as a basic calculator to calculate your standard error and your t-test statistic from sampled information, and then also find the exact p-values according to that test statistic. The first thing is, is I've just written in these little placeholders for where I'm going to put these values. You can calculate your sample mean from raw data, or maybe you're given it from a problem already. These are just labels so we can keep track. So X bar, our sample mean, let's say is 105. Our sample standard deviation, let's say we're given that as 15, and we have 60 overall observations. The claim for the population mean, let's suppose, is 100. So we put in our input values, and then next we can start calculating some of the values we need to get our test statistic. So the standard error is S divided by the square root of our sample size 60. So the functions we can use in Excel, instead of writing in 15 divided by the square root of 60, we can just grab the cells where these numbers are. This is helpful because if we ever need to change any of these, it will automatically change the overall value over here. And we don't need to write them in over and over again. It kind of prevents us from making mistakes. So first we see that our cell B2 has our sample standard deviation S. Then we divide it and take the square root, this is the function for square root, uh, of 60, our sample size. Press enter, this will be our standard error. Now for our test statistic, we know that that's going to be our estimate x bar minus the claim for the population mean, which is 100. That's going to be the difference of the two. Then we divide by the standard error. So we can just grab this value, press enter, and we get a t test statistic of 2.58. Now, if we want to find our lower one-sided p-value, we can use the t.dist function. And as soon as I start typing in t. Dot, it should pop up these two options. So t.dist, I'm going to grab that. I'm going to grab my test statistic of 2.519, so on. And then notice that this next function says degrees of freedom. So here I'm going to, uh, I recognize that a one sample T procedure, its degrees of freedom is N minus one. So I can just grab 60 and then do minus one in the function, comma, then equals true. So that will give me all the area that falls below my test statistic. If I press enter, then I'll get my lower one-sided p-value. So that's all the area to the left. We can see that that's a really high p-value, which makes sense because our sampled information is above the claim and not even remotely below it. So it wouldn't make sense to have um, the mean be less than 100 when our sample mean uh, supports that it's actually greater than 100. So we'd fail to reject the null hypothesis here. All right, so for our upper one-sided p-value, there's a couple of options here. So I'm going to start to write in t again, and I can see that this comes up with t.dist and t.dist right tail. I'm going to use this one for the right side of the distribution. So when I use .rt, that means I'm going to find the area to the right. That's what I want in an upper one-sided p-value. So I'll select my t test statistic, and then again, get my degrees of freedom, 60 minus 1. And so n minus 1, press enter. And this time we can see, of course, that our p-value is really small, and it is the complement of these two values. So if we were to take the sum of these two, they will be they will add to 1. So this is the area above the test statistic of 2.58. This is the area below. And lastly, for a two-sided p-value, again, I start to write type in t, and I notice this t.dist.2t. If I type this in, we can see that if we add in our test statistic of 2.58 comma, the degrees of freedom of 60 minus one, we will get two times what we got for the upper one-sided distribution. So this is our two-sided p-value. Now a couple of other ways that we could have done this problem and just to verify is that you can every time use the t.dist. Here, in, we can use t.dist uh, putting in our t test statistic. Again, our degrees of freedom, which we know are n minus 1, comma, true for the cumulative section. But now we're going to take this and say 1 minus it. If we press enter, we'll notice we'll get the exact same value as we got with the function t.dist right tail. So there's a couple of options here that you can use, and whatever you prefer is fine. Now, again, here for the two-tailed, you can again use t.dist. 
But what I recommend is whatever then your test statistic is up here, you should put in your negative value instead of the positive value. So if you see that this test statistic is positive, then you can multiply it by a negative one, and that will give you the area to the, to the left of it, negative one times our t-test statistic, and put in, again, the degrees of freedom, so 60 minus one, and then put in true. And this will give you the area that falls below the negative value of the test statistic, which actually should be the same as the upper one-sided p-value, but we wanna multiply this value by two. And notice this comes out to be the exact same value as before. So you find the area below the negative test statistic, and because the area above the positive test statistic is the same, you can just simply multiply this by two. So you have a lot of options in order to calculate the p-value using software, getting that exact value in Excel. And the very last thing I wanna show you, which is really cool, is let's say you made a mistake here and the actual sample mean was 103. How is this going to change everything? Put in your new value, press enter, and notice once you set up something like this in Excel, all the values changed. And so you don't need to do it again. If your sample standard deviation was actually 10 instead of 15, change that and your test statistic, your standard error, and everything else changes accordingly. So this can be really helpful. Once you set up a Excel calculator, then everything else will be pretty straightforward.